So I'm going to move now to indirect taxes. And I think, you know, the thing with indirect taxes, and I'm really not sure what your answer is going to be, Patrick, is there any change possible this year? Because really, we are moving to GST that is determined now. Uh, with the exception of making small changes that help us converge down yeah. that road, is there anything <coughs> big that you expect on the indirect tax? Part? Sure. I, 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 and again, I think uh, so much of energy has been spent on GST that I think everybody right now feels that probably the indirect tax portion of the budget is probably going to be just a little bigger than the railway budget, I think. <laughs> uh, hopefully, it will not be that much. According to me, I will break up indirect tax now going forward into GST and non-GST indirect tax. Correct. And according to me, customs is going to be one area where we will have to continuously work even after <coughs> GST comes in, where it will be part of the centre's government. Correct. So, again, as I said, I think according to me, they have to ensure that they are able to generate enough amount of tax hmm. uh, through indirect tax to be able to sustain what they're going to do in GST and so on and so forth. Yeah, so forward. this time, April to December, I think the buoyancy they saw was about 25%, so the bulk of which came through excise yeah. and then some of it came through service, service tax. tax. And I think it is now well established that most of that buoyancy didn't come because more people were paying more taxes. It's that more taxes were applicable, applicable. on people, right? Yeah. Whether it's through fuel yeah. taxes or it's through the Krishi Kalyan says, it's like just that your tax rates went up, you know, it's not as if we suddenly were all making more income to pay more exactly. taxes. Exactly. And, 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 and if you see the, if you're talking about GDP coming down <laughs> and services is such a huge sector uh, and then you have taxes going up, it's kind of uh, contrary and uh, uh, slide. So obviously it's because of higher amount of taxes. One of the things that people are expecting is that service tax rate may go up. I don't expect So from it. the current 15% 15 15 to 18 percent. all the because way which is the, the GST rate? Or? Yes. So, so what the theory is that manufacturer today pays 12.5% excise and 12.5% VAT. Right. That comes to about 25%. And a service provider only pays 15%. So, like you said, he's not paying an equal amount of tax as compared to everybody else. So, the push has always been to bring it up to Correct. a level where. And also, so that the jump from that to GST is not that painful. But having said that, I would really recommend, the, if, if, if possible, to not increase that rate and wait for GST to come. Because um, that 18% is with all the input credit that is going to be available yeah. in GST, which is not available right now. But I do expect some increase in uh, this thing hopefully not in service tax but in isn't service you know okay, let me put it this way whilst th there were two rates applicable to service tax mr kanabar will say three because he yeah. says there are some services that or are services same as well but essentially it was 12 percent and 18 percent so if he is going to move some services to the 18 percent basket is he equally going to move some services to the 12 percent basket i don't and if so. he does that then you know is it really an exercise of any worth from a revenue point of view at all or why bother then? Just why wait? Why not wait till GST happens? So services are going to be taxed based on the tax neutral rate that they are going to compute ultimately, which is going to be a combination of several other factors, credit Correct. and so on and so forth. So I think right now it will just be a simple increase, if any, of the rate. Across the board for Across all services? Across the board because that's generally been the way. And in a way it's good. I'd recommend that we don't have a difference in rate because it leads to a huge amount of litigation. Because you're always trying to figure out which, which is the class Which categorized in 18 or 12. And yeah. you've done all of this with negative lists and all of this so that we don't have litigation in service tax. And if you go back and change the rate, we're immediately going to have a <coughs> But they are going to have two rates under GST, whether they you are, like it or not. But you still don't know what is going to go into what. Yeah, I think know. they're still figuring out. Because it's going to be on so an overall basis. What so you're saying all services <coughs> will see an increase. The service tax rate applicable to all services will go up by... I don't know. Not all the way to 18. Point no, 0.5. 0.5 percent to maybe 0.5? 1 percent. Well, Mr. Kanabar also um, seems to agree on that. Yeah, because no, you're not going to get uh, full credit of that. So about 0.5 percent to 1 percent is what I feel would be a fair amount. I don't know whether it will be collected in the form of a cess or will it be just a rate increase. Because cess, as you know, goes to the government and doesn't need to be shared with the states. states yeah. And so that you buffer yourself because you need to pay the uh, states in the states India. in the future. And you don't know how the GDP is going to function six months down the line. So it's such a dynamic economy that we are in right now. Um, so, I feel that there will be some increase both in, uh, in probably in excise as also in service tax and then we are probably going to see um, Excise by how much? Again, 0.5% to 1% max. I Again through assess thing. is what you are suggesting? I don't know. Usually, yeah, it, whatever they do for service tax is what they will do for uh, excise. But what's the rationale for wanting to increase it in excise? Because excise, in fact, the GST rates will be coming down, right? We don't. Right now, it's all about having maximum amount of revenue before the GST thing sets in because there is still a lot of uncertainty as to what is it that the centre is going to collect in, in GST and whether there is going to be a net loss. And I also believe that they need to maintain this tax buoyancy for so many other reasons. 
and they're not going to do that in income tax because the feeling is that they're going to give tax breaks in income tax. But you know, this is so be counterproductive like because can I make the argument, yes. Mr. Kanabar? Just we just spoke. We started off by saying maybe he didn't needs to do something to boost consumption. Now, if you increase indirect taxes, that hurts across the board in yeah. a country. Yeah. Excise, service, this is this pinches everybody, low income, middle class, upper middle class. So, so, so how is this going to ever be so justified? I Therefore, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm just wondering that. whether the expectation is out of whack with what his intent might be. True, but having said that, what I think is going to happen is, like we have in excise, have a series of exemptions for certain sectors. For example, you have the SSI sectors, which is going to have exemptions, so small scale sectors, uh, but Padri, this is again, you know, if you do this, it's counterproductive to the whole effort to boost consumption. If you do what you're suggesting right now, it's counterproductive to streamlining the entire tax system towards GST, right? Yeah, I, I, if I may I, just I, uh, make yeah. a the comment, which yeah. is a discussion for a different day. Uh, we are all enthused about GST coming in and I think it's a great <coughs> step forward. But look at a GST with four rates for products. Three rates for services and Minka, it is not two, it is three rates for services. For the 28, uh, uh, the highest rate uh, so being applicable. So, looking is. that you are looking at uh, central GST, you are looking at state GST, you are looking at IGST and different baskets being creditable, are you really bringing the simplicity with which you began the whole thing? It, it and, and then compounded with it, there are a few things which have never been discussed by anybody, at least I have not seen anybody in the media talk about it. The ramifications about really unjust enrichment, you need to pass on the yeah. benefit, the provisions relating to imprisonment. Um, I, I think we've discussed these. Yeah, we've so talked about the you know the the new authority that they want to set up to make sure that the benefits of GST are passed on, right? Yeah. So now how do you measure okay. it? Besides that, uh, customs, do you think there might be some reductions across the board to help make in India in some fashion? So or do you, do you rule that out at this point in time? <coughs> this conversation on inverted duty structures comes in every single year. I and I'm not sure whether we want to spend time discussing that, but a quick roundup on what you expect on customs. So last year itself, we had a situation <laughs> where the raw materials were it could be imported at a lower rate as compared to finished goods. So that differentiation was yeah. there. I do expect the differentiation to go on. Okay. Um, I do expect some changes in the customs for the purpose of this uh, import of goods at concessional rate of duties for service providers. Okay. Um, so there's likely to be where you can import goods free of cost, where you're providing services in India. Uh, and you use for manufacturing of a provision of services. So I do expect some changes to be there, some issues on drawback and so on to kind of incentivize this this portion. Uh, so okay, so one final question then to both of you, Mr. Kanabar. I, you know, Mr. Jaitley said in one speech, which was in February 2015, that his stated policy was to avoid sudden surprises and instability in tax <coughs> policy. Do you think this budget is going to finally deliver for us a tax architecture that is not prone to change every budget hereafter? Uh, well, to the extent that you don't have exemptions, deductions, uh, you're really making the tax law simple. I think there is nothing law with our tax policy. I, I, I can just tell you this, I've been repeatedly shouting hoarse. It's really the implementation. It's really how our policy gets implemented at a grassroots level. That is what is creating issues. The lack of accountability at the tax office is what is creating issues. The high pitch demands is what is creating issues, not really the policy of the government of uh, wanting to have a stable policy. That, that's a very laudable objective. That laudable object, you just see the number of discrepancies you find between the policy and the implementation. The FBI is a, quite an example. So it, it's, it's really that, nothing okay. else. I think uh, over a period of time, yes, once GST is implemented, not sure about this year. Gentlemen, to Thank both you. of you, thank you very much for joining us here on thank Bloomberg Quint and thank you very much for watching.